What up, what up, what up? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Jess. Welcome back to another Madden 25 Ultimate Team video. And today, we are one victory away from making the Super Bowl in our season. Now, uh, last game, we definitely won by some luck. I, I can't call it anything other than that. Uh, we uh, timed the snap and were able to block a PAT allowing us to go into overtime and uh, we received ball first where we ended up winning the game due to uh, Tony Gonzalez being miraculous. So uh, we take a look at my opponent's lineup and to me this is a very crucial part of Madden Ultimate Team. Um, obviously, you know, I do it because uh, it's nice to show the viewers what uh, what is the personnel I'm going up against. But even if you're not streaming, if you're not a YouTuber, if you don't plan on showing anybody the game, if you just play for fun or whatever, Always take a look at your opponent's lineup. You always want to try and pick out any significant matchup that uh, goes in your favor. Two things I look at immediately. Well, I look at the entire lineup, but uh, most important things that I look at is their offensive line and their cornerbacks. So if I notice, let's say their offensive line really isn't that great. Let's say they got a 92 here, a 90 here, a 94 here then there's no need for me to blitz as much as I usually do. I can really just sit back in standard coverage because I know that a 90 overall center is going to have trouble, uh, you know, blocking J.J. Watt, um, you know, all game. You know what I mean? So uh, first thing I look at is what type of protection do they have? And to me, that's very important. Make sure you guys do the same. Well, not make sure like it, you know what I mean? But um, I would suggest you guys do the same as we score a touchdown right there, go up 7-0 is always pay attention to what type of protection that your opponent has you know like i said if they got a bunch of low to mid 90s and you're stacked with a 99 freeney 99 greg hardy you know 99 sap or 99 rand or guys with really you know 99 Sue, guys with amazing block shed then you can really just take advantage of that and you know not need to send so much pressure maybe just sit back and dime or quarters and trust me your guys will get through their block shed is too high for those guys, oh my goodness, oh my damn, oh my goodness, we going ham. I always say this, <laughs> no matter what, I've played with so many defensive players, I've played with almost all of them, I've used uh, 99 Freeney, 99 Hardy, uh, Madden 25, 99, JJ Watt, uh, all of the safeties, Troy Palumalu, Rod Woodson, uh, Holographic Brian Dawkins, you know, Ray Lewis, all of them the best player defensively in this game as i go for a touchdown right here well not for a touchdown i wanted to score a touchdown that's why i went for it uh might it's not the most logical thing to do considering i could have went two possessions i could have went up two possessions i have to say with the field goal but when it's playoff time um i feel like i need touchdowns you know i got lucky with the fumble and i didn't want to come away with three i wanted a touchdown um it usually works out in my favor. You know what I'm saying? I want to say I'm probably, you know, 60 to 70 percent in converting those type of situations. But unfortunately, uh, that was one of the times where it just didn't go my way. You know, that happened. You know what I mean? So uh, we were unfortunate there. But uh, it was a risk I was willing to take. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, like I was saying about Sean Taylor, man, the bet, look at just a standard three man rush out of quarters and we get a block shed coming right through. As we hit him with the skinny. Um, Sean Taylor is the best defensive player in this game, bar none. I've sold almost all of my defensive players. I've sold Dawkins. I've sold Hardy. I've sold Freeney. I've sold almost everybody. One guy I refuse to get rid of is Sean Taylor. I would not get rid of him. I would not get rid of him. I would not sell him. I would not auction him. He will be on my team always. He just makes plays. I've had him in a light, I mean, in a deep blue covering middle field. And this man somehow still snags the interception on the opposite side of the field in a position where he should not be in. You know what I mean? He's just so damn good. And because of his strength and his high hip power, he will jar the ball loose. He creates fumbles way more than holographic Brian Dawkins. And Dawkins got 102 hip power. And you would figure with 95 speed and 102 hip power, that's a dangerous combination. You know what I mean? That's getting to the ball carrier in a hurry, running full speed, smacking him with 102 hip power. You would figure a lot of fumbles. I want to say I've probably played 60, 70 games with holographic Dawkins. And that would probably equal to, I don't know, a thousand snaps on defense. And he's probably caused definitely less than 10 fumbles. Sean Taylor, on the other hand, who I've had half as half the amount of time as I've had Brian Dawkins. I believe I had Dawkins first and then I got Sean Taylor. Um, Sean Taylor has created triple the amount of fumbles 
triple the amount of interceptions, triple the amount of bat downs. You know what I mean? He's just a goon. I would easily say best defensive player in the game is Sean Taylor, followed by uh, Madden 25, J.J. Swizzle. My man J.J. Watt is a monster. Um, right here, you know, we're up 14-0. And like I said, oh, the other thing I look at in my opponent's matchup is cornerbacks. That right there to me is the second most important thing. What type of matchups am I dealing with passing-wise? You know, I want to take a look at, you know, uh, what type of speed he has back there. You know, if he has a 96 Asamuga and like a 90, you know, 95 uh, Vontae Davis, you know, both of those guys got, what, 95 speed? You know, As Asamoah got, what, 90, 95, 94 speed, 96 the highest? You know what I mean? So that would let me know, okay, anytime I, I don't see safeties over the top, I'm going to take advantage of Randy Moss with his 99 speed and, and him having a 95 speed cornerback or 96 speed cornerback, you know, I most likely will be able to have the advantage over the top. So uh, always pay attention to your opponent's cornerbacks. You want to know what type of speed you're dealing with. You want to know if you can get away with streaks. You want to know if they can press really well. You know, because those things are very important. So um, that's, you know, my advice. Always pay attention to your opponent's matchup, man. Always, I mean, your opponent's lineup to understand the matchups you're dealing with. You know, because those are very, very important. Uh, right here, up 21-0. You know, things have been pretty much going our way all game. You know, we've been able to force some turnovers. We've been able to, uh, you know, pretty much limit him from being able to drive downfield um, all game. Right there, it looked like it could have been an interception, but good catch by him. So, up 21-0, um, him having two timeouts. I, I would go on ahead on the record and say it would be very tough for him to come back. Damn near impossible as long as I don't do anything stupid. Like, uh, just a couple games ago, I uploaded me down 24 7 almost the fourth quarter and he had ball and i came back and won because uh he was just not playing smart you know what i mean that situation you want to be able to run the ball keep the ball on the ground keep the clock moving avoid passing because incompletions or interceptions might happen that can stop the clock or give the ball back to your opponent and he threw a pick six and he decided to pass the ball still and we got ourselves to stop and we won the game you know what i mean so uh, that right there is, is you know, I'm not putting myself in that situation. You know what I mean? I'm running the ball. And uh, that's exactly what it is we do here. We run the ball one more time. He's not calling any of his timeouts. He pretty much understands that the game is over. He would just be, you know, uh, delaying the inevitable. So we end up winning the game uh, as we just uh, milk the clock right there to the final second. So uh, as you guys see from the title, Super Bowl, uh, quickest Super Bowl ever. Um, next video. Uh, well, next game, actually, we go on ahead and we show you guys the uh, the Super Bowl as uh, Drew Brees goes on ahead and uh, congrats his offensive line for a spectacular game. We win our coins. Now we're going to head on into uh, the Super Bowl. And uh, this right here is definitely a big game for us. You know, definitely a game we want to be able to win. You know, uh, you don't want to make it this far and be able to lose. You know what I mean? I've lost. I've made it to seven or eight Super Bowls or something like that. I think I've played like... 13, 14 seasons, maybe? I'm not sure how many. Maybe one video I'll show you guys my actual statistics on how uh, that is. But um, I've lost one Super Bowl that I've made it to, and that was my second season ever in Mutt. I remember I made it. And the guy had uh, my second season. I never, he had 97 uh, Sue and 97 Warren Sapp. At the time, those were the best defensive tackles you could get in the game. And uh, they were block shedding everything, and I couldn't win, and I lost, and uh, very, very frustrating that game was. <laughs> but uh, I think that's the only Super Bowl I've actually made it to and lost that that I know of. Maybe there's another that it's not coming to mind. But uh, right here, you know, uh, as always, you know, we take a look at our opponent's matchup, not only to show you guys, but to see if there's any type of, you know, substantial uh, matchup that we could take advantage of. So. Uh, right here, as you guys can see, pretty much obviously the video is coming to an end, and there's a reason for that. He uh, loses connection. So he not only does he lose connection, you know, uh, we win the game, and you know we weren't deceived or anything like that. We actually got the victory, and we end up uh, getting the coins and our Super Bowl pack, which we will show you guys after this video. And I mean, after this video, after um, the quit happened. So uh, we end up not. Uh, well, I've, I've I've only gotten lucky one time opening a Super Bowl pack. And it was uh, a 96 Cameron Wake, an elite Cameron Wake. And he was going for about 30K at the time. And I was so excited. Like, I couldn't believe I pulled that. So, uh, as you guys see, we won the game. We do have our Super Bowl pack, which we open up. And there's not anything there. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, man. As always, your boy GS. Love each and every single one of you guys. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the flood of content that we have been providing you guys. As well as streaming every single day. Um, we're going to go on ahead and take a look at our pack. We got a contract. We got a... Uh, 
Hogs Collectible, an Elite Hogs Collectible, and uh, we get a high tower. Yeah, nothing there. So that's it, man. I'm out. Peace. Give it to me, baby.